what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel thank you so much for tuning in uh we're out here in the shop uh this video i've been kind of pondering on this one for a while um i'm gonna just jump right into this so a few days ago i was uh scrolling on youtube and i came across a video the microphone's getting in my way i came across this video uh let me see if I can find this guy's name again. Right here, I'll type this in. Okay. I don't know if this is the same guy. Okay, I'm sorry I'm taking up so much time scrolling this thing. But, so I came across a, a video on YouTube. And this guy was talking about the Dracula draw. And I, I can't tell if this is the same person. So basically what he's teaching and I'm out here in the shop uh, guys real quick before I go any further my Glock 17 the red barrel indicating that I'm using my cool fire trainer so no live rounds while I'm in here but this way you'll get the uh, the idea of the shots being fired. So this guy's idea on this Dracula draw is if you are in an close confrontation with somebody I'm gonna turn the camera here and point at the wall so you can see what I'm talking about so if I'm in a close confrontation with somebody say I'm you know me and another person we're this close then the idea uh, behind this method of draw is whether you're a concealed carry or you have an outer waistband holster but say you've got a, a jacket or a hoodie or something covering it up since you have to grab your shirt to pull up to clear your gun if you're carrying appendix, you'd want to cover your face like this. And I guess because the old vampire movies, uh, how Dracula would be like this, kind of hiding his face, hiding his teeth and stuff like that so you wouldn't see the vampire fangs, then you'd want to do this. I guess in the event that the person has a knife or some kind of other shop object, then they can't cut you in your neck. They can't punch you or anything like that in your face or around, around the jaw because you're protecting it with this hand. And while you're in this posture, after you've cleared your shirt, got your gun, and you're here or here, you can now come up. And, and get some rounds down range. So, okay, fix that little problem. So again, you've, you've grabbed your shirt, cleared your shirt, got your gun, and then you put some rounds on target while doing that. Also, while doing that, you know, again, shirt, come up, you're protecting the, the neck and the jawline, grab your gun rounds and then you back away and you're still able to engage while creating space um, I just looked up on YouTube Dracula draw and I saw two other videos now I'm not sure if it was the same guy that I saw the last time uh, the first video that I saw the guy in his title was basically saying that law enforcement are training wrong I guess because we don't utilize uh, the Dracula draw. Here's the reason why. If I am on duty and I am this close to a suspect, if the wall right here is a suspect and me and that suspect are right here, nose to nose, we can reach out and kiss each other. That's already too close. I don't want that. So if I'm getting this close on a suspect, 
I have already got it in my mind. I am going hands on to get control of this person and probably get them into some handcuffs and take them into custody. I am not getting this close on a person unless I know this person and I'm about to reach out and give them a hug because I ain't seen them in so long. Otherwise, if I'm dealing with a suspect, I am not getting this close where they're now in distance and reaching distance of my pistol, my taser, uh, my baton. If I was still carrying it, I mean, hell, he could even grab my spare mags and take those and throw them. Now I'm down one mag. I am never getting this close to a suspect. I am going to keep distance at all times. This right here is my hand. You can't. See that? That is my distance right there. I am going to try to keep them back. While doing this, I am going to be stepping back, creating more distance to get away. Why do I want to do that? Because if I'm doing this, trying to create distance, and let's say he does get a little, he's already agitated and stuff, and he goes to slap my hand down, I can speed up my... Um, I can speed up in my reverse walk to like a light little jog or maybe even take a bigger step backwards to create more distance. By doing that, I am now giving myself more time to grab my gun if that's what I need to do. Now, if this guy is, again, agitated, he's coming at me and I'm sitting there telling him back up, back up, and he wants to keep coming at me. At that point, you probably just need to go ahead and engage, take a step towards him, grab him with some kind of a takedown maneuver, get that person to the ground, put him in handcuffs. You can easily make an arrest for an assault third degree. You can make an arrest on disorderly conduct. Any of those things you can make an arrest on because he's coming at you. Even if he hasn't said anything in a threatening way, his body posture his demeanor and everything was telling you and your training is telling you that he's meaning to do you some kind of harm. You need to get him under control right then and there. So then engage, try to get him to the ground or get him in some kind of a um, controlling technique to where you can get your handcuffs on him. I am not getting this close with a suspect to where I have to. If when I'm on duty, I'm my, my gun is not covered anyways. So again, when I'm on duty, I'm not getting this close to somebody to where I got to do this and then get my gun and do this. They're already too close. If that person even has a shred of training, all they know to do is when you go to put your hand on your gun, if they are quick enough and get a hand on top of your hand and force it down. They're basically keeping you from pulling your own weapon out of your holster. They have now controlled you. For most people who are right-handed, if they can get on top of you with that left hand with a good solid grip, keeping you from drawing that weapon, Mr. Right Hand over here is still free to keep punching the crap out of you, which is going to disorient you, and now you are still going to lose your gun, your taser, and if it goes any further, you could you lose your life. So I am not going to get in a confrontation with a suspect to where I got to do this and then draw my weapon if that's the case. Now, if I'm out in the streets, I'm off duty, I'm out walking around at Walmart somewhere and somebody wants to get stupid with me, I'm not going to sit there and try to fight them in a parking lot unless I don't have a choice. Even then... You get that close on me to where you can kiss me. I can smell your breath. You're too close. I need to create distance. And then if it's about to jump off to the point where uh, this could get very, very violent, I don't want you that close again to where I'm trying to grab my shirt, pull it up to uncover my gun and then do this crap trying to pretend I'm Dracula to draw my gun because for one... If you think about this, if you train fast, if you train enough, I'm not going to say fast enough. If you train enough, if you put in the time to train, no doubt you can get your gun out of your holster pretty fast, you know, within a couple seconds. But at the same time, a person who has a knife, if they mean to do you some kind of harm, 
You grab your shirt, you're pulling it up, you're getting your gun. Look at this. I want you guys to see this, okay? All of this and this is open, okay? If bad guy has a knife or any other sharp object, if I've already got that thing out in my hand and I've got it behind my back, and I make a move and you think, okay, here it comes. He's about to hurt me. Time to grab my gun. Let me do my Dracula draw. Grab my shirt. Pull it up. Cover my face. I go to grab my gun. He has probably already stabbed me at least three times in my side. What is that going to do to me? Well, the minute you feel that sharp object hit you, uh, uh, you're going to do this. And your natural reaction will be to grab that spot, that, that, that area of pain. You're going to want to cover it and protect it because the body's natural function is always preserving life. It's to preserve its own life. So your body will do whatever it needs to do to protect itself. So if I'm here exposing all of my left side and then this guy just starts stabbing me, I'm going to constantly be doing this. And probably trying to reach over to grab him to stop whatever it is that's causing me pain, which is now taking my mind off of grabbing my gun to shoot back. If you are this close on a suspect, I'm going to stop saying suspect because if I'm on duty again, no police officer in the world is ever going to get this close to a suspect to where we got to do this crap. Not happening. That guy's video, if he's when he put in there, cops are training wrong. I am challenging him. Show me your graduation certificate from whatever police academy you graduated from. And please show me where they taught that in your class, that that is the the proper way for police officers to react in a situation. Me, if I'm this close on a suspect and I'm on duty. We're about to fight. We're already in a fight. Or I'm about to push you backwards so hard to make you stumble. And then at the same time, I'm going to be backing up, creating distance. Which point I will be grabbing my taser if I need to tase you. If you have a deadly weapon, then I'm coming out with my pistol and I'm going to probably give you one or two loud commands to put your weapon down. After that, if you perceive to come at me. I'll have to do what I have to do. If I'm off duty and I'm on the streets again, if I am this close on you, we're either about to fight or I know you personally and we about to hug it out because I ain't seen you in so long. But if you are mad and pissed off at me, I am not getting this close to you to where I got a Dracula draw. No, I'm going to create distance and keep my I'm going to keep my distance. I'm not even going to get that close on you to begin with. I am going to keep my distance. Keep me at a tactical advantage. Once the moment presents itself that I have no other option at that point, then I will deploy my gun. And only then, if I do deploy the gun, meaning it has come out of the holster, I have every intentions of using it because you have shown me that you are willing to use some kind of deadly force against me or cause me some serious bodily harm. I am not walking around here practicing the Dracula draw. No, not doing it. Not doing it. Okay. Again, Dracula draw. You standing nose to nose, bad guy, suspect, whatever the case may be. You're going to reach down, grab your shirt to pull it up to expose your gun while you're either grabbing gun. If you're doing the appendix carry or over here to your side, you're going to pull your gun out and bust off a couple of rounds while doing so, backing up, creating space. Why do all of that when in the very beginning person's coming up on you? He might be walking through the parking lot of Walmart and he's screaming and cussing at you, calling you all kind of names and stuff. You looking around like who this dude talking to? You realize he's talking to you. At that point, you need to start backing up then saying, whoa, whoa, buddy, whoa. If he's still coming up on you and you can identify a weapon, meaning you see his hands, you see that he has a weapon and he is walking at you, meaning to cause you some kind of harm while still backing up. 
That is when you need to then draw your weapon and start giving commands. Get back, get back, get back, get back. If, sus if the person does not get back or they have not turned at that time, we don't do warning shots either. Okay. You shoot a gun in the air saying you're doing a warning shot, that bullet's going up, but after a while it's going to lose velocity. It has to fall back down, which now doing a free fall is going to have a lot more velocity and energy behind it because it's falling. It's going to cause more damage. Either way it goes, you don't know where that bullet just went. So after you have pulled your gun and you're giving that person commands, get back, get back, get back, get back, and they don't. That is when you discharge your weapon. Okay. How many times till the threat has been neutralized? So give me a second, please. All right. So now I'm back in the game. Get back, get back, get back. How many times do you shoot till the threat is neutralized? So that means if you're telling this person to get back and he doesn't, and then you have to shoot twice and that puts him down, you've done your job. Okay, if you're saying get back, get back, he's still coming, he's still coming, he's still coming, you keep going until the threat is down on the ground and you can remove his weapon from him, try to get somebody else's attention to call 911, pretty sure after gunshots, somebody is on the phone with 911, okay? That is how I will handle that. I am not going to get into a confrontation with a person where I'm face to face with them and now I'm doing this crap. Like I'm not Batman, okay? I am not Count Dracula. I don't even think Count Dracula would do that crap. But this whole Dracula draw, no, that will get you killed. Create distance. Somebody is approaching you in an aggressive manner. You create distance and try to get away from them. And then if you cannot get away from them and you have no other choice, then you need to deploy your weapon at that time, giving commands to get back or else you will shoot and then let it ride. OK, if you want to watch this guy's videos and do this Dracula draw, I typed in on YouTube Dracula draw. You are going to get a bunch of cartoon pictures of people drawing out. Dracula and then eventually you'll come to a couple of gun videos where somebody's talking about this Dracula draw if you want to do that mess you go right ahead do you boo boo do you I'm just saying for me and whenever I do my training when I am training other people I am not going to mention no damn Dracula draw that's ridiculous I mean, the first time I heard it was scrolling this guy's video and it's just like, I don't think I've ever heard or seen any law enforcement training videos where they teach this. And there's a reason why they don't teach it. You want to create, you want to keep distance between you and a person. When you are talking and interviewing a person, what we call the interview stance, you're basically standing hands in front of you, not Fold it like this. I'm guilty of this because I'm very comfortable this way. So I'll stand and talk to people like this with my arms crossed. But the interview position is where you're standing. Your hands are in front of you about, you know, about belly button height. Because then that way you're still at a position where if they do get violent against you, you can push them back. You might even be able to throw a palm heel strike and then throw a strike to the face. Again, you can push them back while stepping back, creating distance and coming out. You don't have to pull the trigger. I just wanted to do that one. But my point is, we are always going to be in a position that gives us the tactical advantage, whether that's creating distance and stepping back, uh, giving us the ability to sidestep and push them to the side, whatever is going to give us the advantage. That's what we're going to do. We are never ever going to get this close on somebody where we got to do a Dracula draw to get to our weapon. No. Yes, we wear body armor, but some of those are not stab proof and you still get hit. And there are some spots right up under the armpit. There is no body armor there. So if I'm like this, they have all day to stab me right there in my armpit. And if they go straight, they're going to puncture a lung. Not doing it. So again, 
that's my take on this whole Dracula draw. If you guys want to do it, you go ahead and knock yourself out. Do you, boo-boo. Me and anybody else that I will train, I am not going to mention Dracula draw. If they come to one of my classes, I will probably like throw a water balloon at them and tell them don't ever mention that crap in my class again. Okay, I don't really know about that part, but I don't want to hear that stuff. So again, if you guys want to watch it, like I said, go on YouTube, type in Dracula draw and you'll probably see a couple of videos about it. But I, I just think it's, it's silly because you never want to get that close to where somebody is within reaching distance of your belt you know every now and then you'll hear officers say my tool belt or my batman belt you never want to let somebody get that close to your tool belt where they now have access to your gun your taser your extra mags your baton your handcuffs you don't want them to get close to that stuff so you're going to always keep distance you're never going to get that close and then if you're smart and you're getting into a confrontation out in town somewhere and you're concealed carrying same thing applies. You don't want to give somebody a chance to get that close to your weapon. So don't do it. Keep keep distance. And you ain't got to worry about the Dracula draw. Okay? That's all I got, guys. Thanks for dropping in. Um, make sure you guys uh, keep... keep uh, my God. It's been a minute, y'all. So I've, I've started a, another giveaway uh, a couple of videos back. Trying to get to... I think it's 150 subscribers and uh or was it i think it was 200 subscribers and i was going to do a fishing reel giveaway from six gill and then if i i can't remember i have to look it up guys but i'm trying to do two giveaways basically if we reach a certain number of people i'm looking at giving away another six gill reel and then if i reach another number then i'm looking at ordering somebody a uh a box from Monster Bass with all kind of lures, and then I'm gonna start working with some of the uh, my sponsors within the gun community to see about some kind of giveaways there if they're able to do that. So please hit the subscribe button, smash the like button if you like the video, uh, leave a comment. If you leave a comment for the giveaway, make sure you put your name and let me know that you are a new subscriber so I can put you on that little wheel. So when I get ready to do the giveaway, your name will be added. Again, thanks guys for tuning in. Be safe out there. Stay vigilant and uh, stay safe. Peace.